Now, what we can say from here, this is a generalization of the whole expansion. I can also have a generalization for individual terms. So underneath here, if I just want one term, well, I'll just write individual term. For example, remember I said to you, ah, oh, I might be interested in the term with the biggest coefficient, the largest number, whatever that happens to be. So if I just want one of these terms, what's the way I'm going to state it? By convention, I don't really know why they choose this letter, but um, they say R, like N is a normal letter to use for which number do you want? But I've already used N to be the row of Pascal's triangle that I'm on. So they designate like, which, which term do you want? Let's say the R term. R term. It's just, it's awkward to say, but whatever, okay? R is just a number. R could be 1 or 5 or 18. That would be the first or fifth or 18th term. The R term, generally speaking, is... Okay, let's have a look at this. You're on the nth row of Pascal's triangle. You say N, C, and then you say, well, if I want the R term, this is the zeroth term and the first term and the second and the nth term. So this will just be N, C, R. That's it. Okay. Now, how many A's will I have and how many B's will I have? Well, I started off with N of the A's and I just count down every time, right? Do you notice, for instance, on this, the, the second term here, count them, zeroth, first, second. On the second term, how many a's are there? And there are n minus two. Well, therefore, the number of a's I'm gonna have here is n minus r, because that's how many times I've gone along. In exactly the same way that those powers of a are descending, the powers of b are ascending. So I'm gonna have exactly r of them, okay? There you go. Now, I said that we were introducing this so that you could use your calculator. So this NCR notation, that's actually what it's called, you will see it uh, above the division sign on your calculator, I think you'll find. Okay. So let's just test this out. Uh, we already know what some of these coefficients are. I want you to have a look at this one here that we did here with the power of 5. Okay. We can actually write each of these, and if you've got your writing, your notes there, let's do it like this. This one here, okay, how does it fit into this scheme? Which row of Pascal's triangle am I on? For, for this particular example. The fifth row, right? So this number here would be 5C, which term is it? It's the, careful, it's the zeroth term. I know it's a little bit weird, but 5C0 is the way we would say that. That means this is 5C1 and 5C2 and so on. So for instance, if you go to your calculator and you punch in, say, 5, you need to press shift, press the division sign, you'll see that big chunky C appears. And then if you say 5C2, <coughs> you hit equals, and it faithfully returns to you the coefficient you expect, which is 10. Okay. Now, this is a bit trivial for the fifth row of Pascal's triangle, but suppose <laughs> you wanted to know what the coefficients were on like the 11th row. Okay, so I would say, 11C. Now, I already know what 11C0 is. Whatever C0 is going to always be 1. The 0 term is on the edge of Pascal's triangle, right? I also know what 11C1 is going to be because the next term in is always the row on the tr of the triangle you're on, which is 11, okay? But I don't know what the next one is. I have no idea. So let's go 11C2 and see what happens. 55. So I don't need the whole triangle, I don't need to draw the whole thing. I can say, well, that's the next one. And then I can say 11C3 is 165. I'm just going to jot these down for a second. Uh, 11C3 is 165. Can someone tell me what's 11C4? Can someone calculate it? 330. 11C5? 462. 462? Yep. Um, and I'm actually going to. No, I need one more. 11C6. What's 11C6? Oh, it's, it is. No, I didn't need more. Okay, so you can see at this point, oh, I don't need to do any more, do I? Because I'm just going to climb back the other side, climb back down the other side. I'm just going to go 330, 165, etc. Okay. By the way, remember yesterday I showed you some weird like magic patterns in Pascal's triangle and I said this thing is weird this object is weird you just add numbers and you get these weird shapes let me show you one more thing uh, humor me 
What's 11 divided by 1? Sorry, 11 divided by 11. It's 1. What's 55 divided by 11? Uh, what's 165 divided by 11? Oh, look, yeah, it's... <laughs> 150 plus 15. 330, that's an easy one. That's 30, right? 462 divided by 11. 42. 42? 42. Because it's 420 plus 42. Um, hmm. Now, you've got Pascal's triangle in front of you, right? When you have a look at other rows of Pascal's triangle, not all of the terms are multiples of the row you're on. Only some of them. I wonder if you can work out which ones they are. 